In this video tutorial, you will learn how to work with the Sequencer tool. This tool allows you to create a sequence of different states to test recloser control functions which are not covered by other test tools. You can set voltages, currents, and the duration for each state individually. Using a trigger, you can measure the trip and close times. The Sequencer Tool screen is divided into two parts. On the top half of the screen, the states are listed. To add a new state, select the plus symbol. To remove a state, select the minus symbol. Below, you can configure the state that is currently active. Select the currents and the voltage table to configure the analog outputs. In the Duration field, you can define a fixed duration for the state. In this scenario, we want to test the reclosing sequence of our controller. It is configured to two shots to lockout. We will start with a load state for a defined time, followed by a fault where the first trip will occur. Afterwards, we will add a state where we wait for the first close, and followed by another fault state where we will expect a second trip. In the last state, we want to verify that the controller does not reclose. To set the load current for the first state, click into the table and select Multi Selection to adjust all three phases at once. In this instance, the duration for the pre fault state is set at 5 seconds. Now add the next state. This will be our first fault state. To simulate a three-phase fault, we set the fault current in all three phases. For this current, we expect the recloser to trip. We define a trigger on the trip signal. As soon as the trip signal is detected, the state will end and the sequence will move on to the next state. If your recloser supports single-phase tripping and you are simulating single or two-phase faults, you can also just select one or two phases as triggers. To complete the configuration of the fault state, we will now have to enter the expected trip time together with the absolute and relative tolerance values. These values will be used to assess the trip time. If there is no trip during the defined trigger time, including the defined tolerance, the test will abort. Now we add a new state for the first reclosing cycle. We set the currents to zero, and again we define a trigger, but this time we select the close signal. Enter the configured dead time for the trigger time. That's it! In the same way, we can now configure the rest of the states. The final state is the lockout state. We will output zero current for 30 seconds. The duration of the lockout state has to be set long enough to make sure that the controller is in the lockout state and doesn't reclose again. Now we can proceed to the test screen and start the test. After the test is completed, we can analyze the trip and close times. If one of the states fails, the sequence will be aborted immediately. For example, this would be the case if we do get a trip or close signal while no trigger condition is defined in that state. If you want to analyze the trip and close signals in more detail for each state, you can also switch the view to Events. Another great way to use the Sequencer tool is to use it with the Rico Plan software to prepare your test plan. The advantage of using the Rico Plan software in this case is that you can define names for the states. This will make it easier for the tester to work with the sequence. Just enter a state name in the Name field.
When executing the test plan, you will see that the state names are now shown as defined. No matter which way you prefer to work with the sequencer tool, it will support you in testing different functions of your recloser or sectionalizer control.